The following is brought to you by PaulAkers.net. Hey everyone, Paul Akers. You know, I just did a webinar in Russia and they asked me if I would do a quick recap. So I want to recap some important points that they wanted me to go over a little bit more in detail. So number one, how do you create a strong corporate lean culture? And what I would say is you don't want to create a strong corporate lean culture, you want to create a strong lean culture throughout the entire organization from top to bottom, from bottom to top. Everyone needs to be on board. The way you do it is you level everything. And what I mean by that is the people who are in the office are not more important than the people that are on the shop floor. As a matter of fact, just the opposite. The people on the shop floor are the ones that are adding value, the value that your customers are paying for. So in order to have a great lean corporate culture, you have to get the people who are normally in the office, the smart people, the white collar people, all those people, to deeply respect the people that are doing the work on the shop floor. If you fundamentally change the way you think about things, you're gonna have a powerful lean culture. A deep sense of respect for everyone both directions. Start working as a team, realizing everybody's job is just as important as everybody else's job. So that's the first thing. The next question was, how do we hire at FastCap? Well, it's very simple. We do everything the contrarian way. We don't do things the way everybody else does things. We don't accept resumes. We don't want your resume because it's all lies. What we do is we say, take your phone and hold it horizontally and tell me in 60 seconds or two minutes about yourself and just tell me about yourself. Then send that to me. And if I like what I hear, I invite you in for an interview. If I like the interview, then we invite you to work for us for one day and we pay you for that one day. At that time, you're working different processes in different areas. Our people are working with you, evaluating your attitude. At the end of the day, we bring in all our people people and we ask, how did you like Bob, Susan, Frank, Martha? And if everybody says, yeah, they had a great attitude, they were asking the right questions, they were very inquisitive, so forth and so forth, we ask them to come back for a test week in which we pay them for the test week. We haven't hired anybody yet. And then we repeat that process and everybody's looking at it very carefully. At the end of one week, we bring everybody back in, all the people who worked with this individual, and we say, did you like them? And if everybody agrees 100%, 100%, then we would hire the person. But if we don't get agreement, then we don't hire them. So the contrarian way is to let your people hire the new people. The way the corporate way does it is you have an HR department. Well, the HR department's not working with the people. The people are working with the people. So we let the people do the hiring. We let the people be the influence on who we bring on. Totally different way of doing things very contrary. The next question is, how do we get away from managing people and get people to work together in a collaborative way? Well, first of all, you don't get that. You have to develop that, and you do that through teaching and training your people. The way we did it at FASCAP is we have a morning meeting where we teach the idea of cooperation. It is better to cooperate than to compete with one another, so to speak. Certainly, we want a great result through setting expectations, but at the same time, we realize that we're all on the same team, we're all there to serve one another. So the answer to your question is, we develop this way of thinking. You don't just get it, and we develop it on a daily basis through a daily kata, which is a routine, the Japanese word for a routine, K-A-T-A. -A. Our daily kata is three essing every day for a half hour, a morning meeting studying Deming's principles, Ono's principles, the U.S. Constitution, a history lesson. We study our problems. We go over our improvements. We talk about what we're grateful for. We develop this attitude of cooperation so we don't have to manage people. So the next question is, how do you motivate people without money? Well, the answer is everyone needs to make a living and you should be paying people commensurate with what they produce. These are the laws of nature. If you have a lean thinker who's constantly improving everything, it would behoove you to pay them more money. So we don't pay people a bonus 
for improvements. We would never do that. It's too much management. It's too much bureaucracy to do that. But indeed, our people are paid a lot more than average workers, like a minimum of 30% more, getting regular raises. And the reason why is because they're producing more. So first we make the focus on improvement. And the natural byproduct of improvement is efficiency, higher profitability, and then it's very natural for leadership to then want to pay people more. So that completes the cycle. But you don't hold the carrot out there, we'll pay you more if you do this. No, first the obligation is for all of us to continuously improve. And we don't do it to make more money, we do it because it's the thoughtful way to conduct your life. So philosophically, we have to get everything straight in our head. If we're constantly improving, it's the laws of nature that you're going to make more money. You're going to be paid more money. Who wouldn't pay someone more money if they're more productive than the next person? First, you must have your philosophy correct. And the philosophy is it makes sense to continuously improve your life so your work can get better and everyone can benefit. The next question is how to get people to solve problems without assistance. Well, the truth of the matter is that's exactly what you need to do. You need to assist them in learning and development and problem solving. This is the very essence of what leaders do. We don't just say, hey, go take that hill. We go up to them next to them and we take the hill together. We learn together. We solve problems together. We develop each other together. This is the part that most leaders never get. They want to sit in their ivory towers and their nice offices and tell everybody what to do. That's not how you lead. You lead shoulder to shoulder, right next to everybody, working together and developing everyone's problem solving skills. This is the job of the leader. This is my job. My job is 100% to develop and assist my people in how to solve problems. How do you deal with people sabotaging the system or undermining what you're doing? Well, that's the easiest question of all to answer. I bring people in my conference room, not in my office, because I don't have an office, and I say, Bob, Mary, Martha, George, Vladimir, whatever your name is, you know what, we've decided as a company that leans the most important thing for us because we need to add value to our customers. This is what our customers want. They want us to improve, drive costs down, drive quality up. There is no if, ands, or buts about it. This is the way we're running the company. Now, if you want to be a part of this company, I will spend any amount of money, time, educating you, training you, teaching you, but I will not push you, cajole you, poke you, prod you, threaten you, or do anything else. If you make me do that, you're going to get out of here and you're going to have to find another job because that's not what we're doing here. What we're doing here is continuous improvement. So the answer to your question is how do you deal with people that want to sabotage? Number one, you double your efforts to work with them and develop their problem solving skills. But if they continue, even though you're spending time, money, effort, personally developing them, they continue to sabotage, then you bring them in the conference room and you have that very direct message. That's all I do and it works very well. Uh, the next question is so interesting. What can be the real economic effects of doing lean in a company and what is it for FastCap? Well, it's very simple. 21 years of business, three price increases in 21 years, cost always going down, quality always going up, uh, wages always going up, profitability always going up, everybody winning, a high retention of people, high quality people to work with, no backbiting, no, no politics, all the nonsense that most organizations are riddled with, we don't really deal with. And the economic benefits of that are massive. A, a stable company that has great cash flow, that doesn't have debt. I could go on and on and on. But the only way you're going to get to that is if you're rigorous through a daily routine on the practices that I'm talking about, 3 sing improvements, and the development of people through the morning meeting. But it's the rigor of those three elements that are so critical that most people are not willing to do. If you do those, the economics are the byproduct. They're not the target. This is the target, higher quality for your people, higher retention, people being happier at work. When you, when you accomplish all those things, then the byproduct is the economics. 
Okay, the last question. So how do you control people in light of the pandemic because people are working from home? Indeed, we have people working from home and I don't even worry this much about managing them. Why? Because I trust them. Why do I trust them? Why? Because I've trained them. So I don't work with people I can't trust. We don't have locks on the cabinets. Everything's open in our company. There's nobody that has a special key or special access. Everything's open and transparent. So unfortunately, you can't go back retroactively and try to solve that problem. You had to solve that problem front loaded with the development of your people to think differently, to create an environment of trust. Then when you have a pandemic and people are working from home, you're not thinking, are they wasting their time? Are they wasting the dollars of the company? Are they squandering the resources that have been given us? The answer is no, because philosophically they understand how important it is to create a sustainable future for everyone, for our customers, for our team members, for the company, for our society, for our community. And you do that through an environment of trust and transparency because people philosophically are thinking about life at a high level. Hopefully the answers to these questions help you. If you have any more, bring them on. I'd love to answer them.